Hey, hey, you beautiful buttholes. Um, like I said, I developed this channel. I'm going to do a little adjustment here. Uh, developed this channel more for, you know, just uh, certainly my family, my kids, and uh, my friends in case uh, in case I go under or whatever and I'm not around here anymore. They got a place they can come back and uh, we'll do a little bit of reference and a little bit of, uh, I don't know, remember what I sound like and things like that. Um, tonight's story is about my very first shotgun because I don't want somebody to sell this thing for $35 at a yard sale thinking it is nothing. It says, uh, I guess this one goes to the first grandbaby would be my request. Boy or girl, because, oh, hey, because we raise lions, not sheep in the McDonald family. How's that? Um, 1975, I was six years old. Uh, my dad took me into town, and uh, I'll be honest, I have mixed uh, memories on this. I remember there was a place, there was a pharmacy there now on, uh, and I think Tyke Elliott's family or something runs this pharmacy. It's on, that's Main Street, um, up by, before it goes into Western Avenue. There used to be a metal building there, and I can't remember what it was called. We used to go there all the time. It was kind of a, a general, almost like a general store type thing. I remember there used to be a Kresge's toy store on the corner of Second and Paint, where the uh, where the sheriff's department is now. And anyway, I don't remember. My dad just we went in and we bought this gun, or if I got it for Christmas, I I really don't remember. I have two memories. Maybe, maybe I kind of picked it out at the store and then Santa brought it for Christmas. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, I got a little single shot 410. It's a little made in Brazil. It's a model 151. How I remember that, I have no idea. But it's just a little you know, single shot break open uh, ejector. Hammer, fired, 410. And this was my baby when I was six years old. That's when I got it. Um, it has a stock repair that you can... I did a daggone good job. It has a... Right there. It has a stock repair. And this thing sat in a, uh, a gun rack on the wall at mom and dad's right above their wood, wood stove. And it was in a gun case on the gun rack on the wall. And apparently it got so much heat and got dried out so bad by sitting above that wood stove that this stock, it just cracked in the gun case. And I pulled it out of the gun case one day and my stock, it, it, just a huge, it was a huge chunk, just fell out, came out. And uh, so a little bit of wood glue. I want to say I, cut, I got a couple brads in there. Feels like it. Um, <laughs> I scratched my initials in it, HM. Uh, I think that's the only damage to this dude. And I'll tell you what, it's seen some miles. and uh, But it's manufactured by the Kresge Toy Company. Different world back then, huh? But you got to stand right on top for the Kresge Toy, toy Company. But uh, 410, 3 inch, full choke. Proof tested. Pretty sure it's made in Brazil. I think it says on here somewhere. Um, I've seen these in 20 and 12 gauge also. Uh... Yeah, by Campiano, whatever. I don't, have my, I don't have my peepers on, so I can't see. But anyway, that is my very first shotgun. That's it well, my very first gun uh, of any kind. And uh, it resulted in my very first kill when I was six years old. I have a photograph here. I got to try to get this right. But yeah, that, that's, that's little man Heath at six years old with his rabbit. And uh, we were over on the McDonald farm, grandma and grandpa's, and uh, me and dad were shooting. There's a, we call it the two acre woods. It's over there between where uh, grandma and grandpa's house was and where Forrest, Nick, and Aunt Vicky and Uncle Jack lived. It was, there was a little woods in a field right there. And it was, it was, there was fields all around. And then apparently it was two acres. It was nothing but woods. And man, it was full of rabbits, full of rabbits back then. You could go in there. Me and Forrest would go back there. I remember me and Forrest went back there one day and we killed, oh my gosh, 
whatever the limit was on rabbits, we killed them in like an hour and we were out. And, and we didn't hurt the population of that woods at all. And this is pre-coyote and things like that. And, and back then trapping was good. So there wasn't a lot of fox because people were trapping them. And the same way with raccoons and things like that. And um, the rabbits flourished. And man, there's nothing funner than rabbit hunting. And there is nothing better eating when Grandma Gladys Kello was fixing rabbits, let me tell you. And, uh, but anyway, me and Dow were in there hunting. And uh, I told him, I was like, man, son, I know there's a rabbit over, you know, over there. And Dad's like, man, we've already been through there. There's nothing. Fine. He's like, just go. So I walked over and I went over and, and there was this rabbit and he was, uh, if I don't look at him, he can't see me. And so I pony up on this rabbit and, and I wasn't very far away. And, uh, it's a little full choke. I'm probably shooting like three inch number sixes or something. And, um, I aim right for his head and I plumb shot this rabbit's head dead off. And, uh, that was the one that you saw right there. That was my, my very first prized kill. And, uh, I, I've had people tell me this story so much that I think I remember, but I'm not sure that I remember. But what the story was that when I was in kindergarten, which was when I killed this rabbit, is that, um, I bagged it up in a yellow bag and I took it to show and tell the very next day at school. And, um, Heath, do you have anything to share? Was it Mrs. Paul Hamus, I think was her name? And, um, yeah, pulled a rabbit out of my hat right in front of everybody, right in the middle of class. I really don't, I was six. I don't remember that part, but, uh, I've been told so many times that I did that that I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But, uh, yeah, supposedly I took the rabbit to, uh, kindergarten for a show and tell the very next day. Wouldn't put it past me. But, uh, that's the story. Just a little quick one. And uh, everybody have a fantastic day. Uh, I just had chemo this morning for oh, five hours. Yeah, five hours. And uh, so I will likely be up all night and all tomorrow and uh, feeling like crap on Wednesday. So uh, everybody have a great day. That's my little story for the day. Ta-ta. Stay grumpy. And I will see you on the range. Bye.